Anyway, I'm Tony B, and I want to welcome everybody here to the 23rd Annual Living Arts Poetry Slam. Now, at a slam, you'll hear the name Mark Smith. I guess I know people that have been to a slam before here. How many people first time slammers here? Whoa, okay, okay. So, generally, when you hear the name Mark Smith, one of the poets here, can you tell me what do you say? So what? So what? So every time in a slam when you hear the name, uh, Mark Smith. So what? Poetry slam was invented. It, it, it was, okay. You hear the name Mark Smith when followed by the so what. So who knows why we say so what? Anybody here know why we say so what? Any other boys know? I didn't know it. Well, Mark Cohen the term to emphasize the fact that the fact that he was a founder is insignificant. What is significant is that from a small event in Chicago in 1984, slams have become a poetic performance phenomenon that has swept across the globe. And now, I want everybody here to give a special thanks to Mark Smith. So what? All right. And uh, the three people that said they want to be my sacrificial poets are not here. Okay, everybody, before we get started, we need to get the judges' taste buds limbered up. We want them to get used to scoring a poem. And we have a special lady here who just all of a sudden about go up. Not loud enough? Oh, you were making, he's back there dancing. Oh, okay, my bad. Yeah. No, no, he's not the one. Okay, so judges, this boy here is not competing, but you're gonna use the scores you give this poet as a template and try to keep, if you feel the other poems are, are better, you go higher. If you feel they're less, you go lower. And judges, no matter what, stay on your even keel, remember that template, and do not be swayed by anything the audience says. Audience sway the hell out of these damn judges. <laughs> if they suck, boo, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to get started bringing our sacrificial blood spilling poet up here. Miss, which one is it now? Just Miko. <laughs> Give it up for Miko, everybody. They're trying to kill us. They're trying to murder us. Numbers don't lie, even though they try. The silence that speaks will be the death of we. They try to kill us, they try to murder us, one by one till we're all gone. The numbers don't lie, even though they try. The silence that speaks will be the death of we. Do you know you? Do you know where you came from? Do you know that African Americans are the root of all civilization, the oldest race on the planet, damn it? Sans Bushman tribe of Africa, the one single strand in the body, it and melanin go hand in hand, our cognitive skills richer, jumps higher, dancing more rhythmic, skin thick, black don't crack, do you know you? Do you know how badly they look at us? Showing display of material things is all the rush. We will cuss and fight and march with no resolution. Revolution is not being televised. Reality is not being realized. Truth is so far from it. We should be before we become hit with the eye falling and can't get up stick. Quit feeling sorry for ourselves and gain infinite knowledge that will build infinite wealth. Do you know you? 
Do you know that when sent to prison, third amendment's the sentence? Slavery is abolished except when found guilty of a crime that's very so much alive. There are more of our men in the sophisticated slave, plant slave plantations called correctional facilities than there were in the 1850s, a decade before the Civil War began. And our ancestors ran and fought as hard as they could so we could be doing what needed to be done like any righteous being under the sun. But seems we've never been free due to being born a certain way. No escaping life filled with hustles, bustles, poverty and strife. Unjust laws broken so we can have liberation. Immigration is at its all time high. More freedom would be enjoyed if we would search and find the reason why civil rights was a movement in the first place. Black leaders would teach it for the entire brown race. Land of the free, home of the brave. But we've never been free due to living in these last days seeming like an eternity. It burns me the adversity we've endured with no way out, not having a cure. Social deprivation is all that we know, and folks wondering why we have the syndrome crabs in a barrel when all we want is to be. Unchained from what's held us back for so long so we can have peace. Peace of mind, heart, love, and grace, regardless if we have a black, yellow, brown, or white face. Do you know you? If you don't, you should get to, so we can break the cycle of the curse that's been plagued on we. Hate on our people for centuries because they trying to kill us. They trying to murder us one by one till we're all gone. The numbers don't lie, even though they try. The silence that speaks will be the death of we. They trying to kill us, they trying to murder us, one by one till we're all gone. The numbers don't lie, even though they try. The silence that speaks will be the death of me. Thank you. So, how did most of you hear about this? Facebook. Facebook? Word of mouth? You just wandered in here? Okay, judges. Scores up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Where's the fifth year? Five. Okay. From low to high, hold your scores up. Low to high, we have a keep them up. Seven point five. An eight. An eight. A nine point five and a nine point five. Give it up for the poll. We got a Nazi judge and two, <laughs> two Rolo and Pappy on the stomach judges. <laughs> All right, let's keep that enthusiasm going. Give it up for our first poet, Miss Allie Lofton. scarce the consequences of our actions have been nearing fruition. Our actions motivated by greed, mainly, and all that goes hand in hand. The line was drawn in the sand, the sand of Iraq, and we can never look back. The consequence is just that. Yo, for any hope of redemption for our nation, we must completely kill off all seeds of discrimination, not just black, white, Latino, and Asian, but prejudice based on education, location. How can those with billions in games with women mothers $20 to their names. America's disease is apathy, and there's no doubt the cure must come rapidly. The cure is in youth, and we must change our passions to change our mind and in turn our actions. 
If the necessary changes cannot be made, we will go down. Our country's in the grave. The new civil war is between Republicans and Democrats. Yeah, how in the hell did we let ourselves do that? We must unite and fight the good fight. Or the torch of our liberty won't shine in the night. I wrote that a decade ago, but didn't want to believe it, so I followed it away like all my other nightmares. Never wanted to retrieve it, but I think the day has come where this message is needed, so I've come up on the stage to help y'all perceive it. See, I'm tired of all the bullshit going on. It's going on before our very eyes, and so much is very obvious, but too much is in disguise. Too much is in disguise. So look up in disguise. Do you see what you thought we would see by now? A world filled with peace and the heavens smiling down? No? Then maybe we should think about why. Think about who makes it this way, begin to listen and dissent before every single freedom is taken away. I think we've been busy as actors in this mass distraction play for no real pay while the directors and stream pullers with their pockets already bulging but still getting fuller are looking and laughing at whole countries falling, crashing into the underground there where rebuilding billionaires wait with teeth gnashing. In the last 10 years, some of my fears have come quite true, but it's not out of the blue. See, Tears, the rain like spears, we're coming from the sky, or ignored or scorned as they fall from your eye. And why the fuck is half the world still hungry and in pain? We've made technological advances so insane and impressive that it's inane and oppressive to not share the bounty or it's a tiny little county in this universe of space. So how dare this tiny group of inhumans try to kill the human race? Let me identify myself as a small facet of one face of the holy diamond sand from heaven to heal. We gotta begin by scraping off the dry paste to hate stuff to earth space by those who'd rather waste every precious value and ruin every perfect taste. It has not been so long in the history of humanity that we put up with this kind of insanity, so to you, I say no more. Just let us close the door on this proverbial hell. The second it slams shut, all the walls will fall down and we'll have heaven on earth. We will all wear crowns. Give it up, give it up for Miko, everybody. Okay, are my judges ready? Scores up. From lowest to highest, we have a 7.5, an 8.0, an 8.0, an 8.5, and a 9. Give it up for the Coming next to the mic, give it up for Phil Boswell, everybody. Keep it going. <laughs> the name of my piece is called Old Man on the Corner. Old Man on the Corner. Has the world passed you by? Does it slip a little more each day, no matter how hard you try? They sought the skill in your hands back when you were in your prime, but that was so long ago. Another life, another time. Old man on the corner, is that a tear in your eye? Do you feel your love of 50 years somehow told you a lie? She said she'd stay forever. And though she really did try, it was not her fault nor her choice that she was the first to die. Old man on the corner, every day at her stone, you would not be so lonely if only the children would phone. But they moved away long ago, and now that you're alone, they phoned each other and decided it best that you be placed in a home. Old man on the corner, did they sell the house you built? Never asked your permission or even how you felt. They took it all away from you, prized possessions you'll never see, sold at auction to strangers to keep you where you don't want to be. Old man on the corner, you look so terribly lost 
Your children have seen your care. Your will to live is all it cost. You only wanted to go to the store, and it was bright and warm today. But on return, you became confused and somehow lost your way. Old man on the corner, on unsteady legs you stand. Has your load become too heavy? May I lend a helping hand? As I reached to help, you disappeared. I heard an echoing voice say, You have looked into the future and seen yourself today. And the score for Allie Lofton was was a 24.5. Give it up for the poll. All right, judges, are we ready? Scores up. From low to high, we have a 6.5. A 7.0, a 7.5, a 7.5, and an 8.0. Give it up for the board. The only thing we can ask of judges is that they be consistent. Audience, y'all are doing a good job of swaying the judges. All right, all right, all right. All right, everybody, let's get ready for the next board. Give it up for Chance Sirabandon. From where does fear spring? I do not know when or whether fall arrives for fear, that sacred season during which fear finally withers away, leaves and dies, for it may merely be lying, hiding dormant beneath the pure cold snow as it eagerly awaits the spring. For my part, for my part I find, for my part, my mind, struggles to find some sense from this sense from this sensual yet senseless existence in which existentialism is my soul's neutral state and I and beneath benighted eyes I can see the car of my life stuck spinning its own black tires backwards revving and ready to escape an abyss which stares back but when spring finally did arrive courage came with it found me not before the fear ever could now being up before the fear ever could. And all the poems that season fountained up naturally, floating up like dreams, spouting up from the ground like ancient seeds, the self same way an oak tree escapes from a sleepy acorn. One does not have to water nor feed the seed, but only let it grow. score for Phil Boswell was 22. 22. Give it up for the poor. 22.0. Phil Boswell. Judges, are we ready? Scores up. We have from low to high, we have a 6.0, a 6.0, a 6.0. A 6.5 and a 7. Give it up for the poll. The judges are being consistent, I can say that. All right, everybody, put your hands together for Eddie Earl. Eddie Earl. I hear a lot of talk about freedom, I hear freedom this and 
freedom back. But my question is, what is freedom to be exact? Freedom is the state of being free, the absence of constraint, not dependent. See, our ancestors were physically enslaved for over 300 years. And although slavery is no longer today, some are still not free. Because they are still enslaved in their mind. Enslaved to a cell phone, enslaved to likes on social media, enslaved to a crush, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, wife, husband. Enslaved to their job. Enslaved to how they look. Enslaved to the thoughts of others. Even enslaved to the thoughts of themselves. Enslavement was not the life that we were promised. We were promised to have life and to have it more abundantly. That's why it's important that we see ourselves free. Seek freedom from comparing your struggles to others. Everyone's walk is different. We're all fighting a battle of some sort. Yours no tougher than mine and mine no tougher than yours. Seek freedom from anything or anyone that's holding you back from experiencing true happiness. That's right. Do not be afraid to let go. You cannot be free if you live in fear of the unknown. To my little black girls, rock your hair naturally, no matter how long or short it may be. That's how you know you are free. To my little black boys, grow your hair, no matter how nappy it may be. Do not allow society to place limitations on you because of the texture of your hair or the color of your skin. And let's do away with the light skin versus dark skin. You are all beautiful and brilliant just the way you are. Do not be afraid to let your light shine. Lastly, to everyone in this room, seek freedom from whatever it is that's in your mind that's holding you back from experiencing your true personal greatness. You will thank yourself for it later. Poetry, it's safe to say that you changed my life. I only hope to change yours too. Thank you. Data score for a chance here abandon. 18.5. Give it up for the poll. <laughs> Judges, are we ready? Scores up. There you go. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> From low to high, we have a 7.5, an 8, an 8.7, a 9, and a 9. Give it up for the poll. We'll be going for the next board to the mic, Christopher Michael. I will meditate in this chamber and pray for a better path. I might be known for firing off, but I refuse to spiral out. No ricochets, no punching holes in walls for me, so no matter how hard you squeeze, you won't trigger me. If the hammer falls, it will be in vain. I will not be getting innocent blood on my full metal jacket tearing through anyone's school today. You know, this would be a good time to take me back home and find a better way to deal with these bullies. Don't be the coward they accuse you of by getting me to do your dirty work. Courage is not extinguishing a light. Anybody can do that. Courage is standing strong when fear threatens to pistol grip your soul and squeeze an explosion out of you. Say no. Say stop. Ask for help. Like you probably tell your parents, your teachers are just punching that bastard in his mouth. Excuse me, sir. But feeling down is not a good reason to pick me up, so put me down. I refuse to cavitate my way through the cavity of your skull. I will not block you out of your misery. I am not your after dinner mint or midnight snack. I am not your retirement pack, your pathway to peace. I will not be the last thing on your mind today. What if I told you that the voices of guilt will follow you to the next world? My click, click, boom was not loud enough to drown them out. I'm going to give you something to be happy about, like the perfect number of holes you already have in your head. 
Someone loves you. You're valuable. I forgive you. I give you one more day to figure it out. Mr. Officer, I've been scoping the situation. And from my point of view, your life is not in danger. How would I justify this homicide and help you fill in this pre-drawn chalk outline? No one is dying to see it today. I will not be the exclamation point to irrational fear, hatred, ignorance, and just plain stupidity. Yes, I'm questioning your caliber. Your instincts stink. You need more training. That's an old man with a cell phone. That's a young man speeding to his wedding. That's a little boy peddling weed to feed his mom. Do black people really remind you of the shadows that haunt you? Mm. Here's a suggestion. Take your badge off and throw that at them. It's not like you know how to use it anyway. Haiku interlude! <laughs> Killer cops leaving a bad taste in your mouth? Well then, try indict mints. <laughs> Dear soldier, your mission is canceled today. No ma'am, I would not break off the pieces in your husband's heart because you broke yours. I am so that you got cut off. But I am not your I-35 or LA Highway Revenge. No, I will not punch myself in the back of that child for selling gum, cigarettes, or Chico sticks. You will not use me to coerce anyone out of a first pair of kicks or drugs. There will be no accident today because I will not budge. I'm not protesting our Second Amendment, but exercising my first. So I hope the silence of this hollow point makes the point. I will not be anyone's assassin today because Mr. Bullet is taking a holiday. Give it up for the board, give it up for the board. I think he was, I think he was not so subtle in trying to tell me something. So yeah, I'm gonna get the mix and I'm gonna tell you. All right, the scores for Eddie Earl? 25.7. 25 25.7. 25 All right, judges, are we ready? Scores up. We have from low to high, a 9.5, a 9.9, a 9.9, a 10, and a 10. Give it up. Okay, let's keep it going for the next poet. Give it up for for Tony. But I still promenade with my head raised And my knees only buckle when I fast and pray For the shell-shocked soldiers who've been casted away No longer able to cope with the masquerade of being okay After eyewitnessing death in gory ways The nightmares of massacres are nicknamed glory days Well, he's a patriotic hero He doesn't feel like a hero, but they glorify him And oh, he thought of running away, but a mind took his limbs really should be proud because he took five of them but was lost in the body count this friendly fire Corporal Tillman. So we need that shroud of pride. He just wants his legs back and the nightmares to stop and his sanity to be intact and war should be called limbo for the limbs that have been blown off. God bless the dead soldiers but what are the ones who can't walk? What about the right hand to turn the south pole because of an IED in Baghdad? He can't play catch with his sons and he's sad that he's depressed because he thinks he's a bad dad. His world was toppled by insurgents on the quest to get virgins and a better life in the afterlife if they find infidels and purge them. Suicidal bombers or martyrs? It depends on what side of the boom you're on. The Holy Bible or Quran. Different perspectives make them assume we're wrong. But who's to say who can pray in a particular way on a particular day for a particular God who's not so particular? But what is so ridiculous is that it's so testicular. In other words, who's got the biggest balls? I mean, bombs. What is George W. or Saddam? Or is it the kid with the killer vendetta because collateral damage murdered his mom? Hate is contagious and rage is a symptom if the system is corrupt and what will erupt are more victims looking to get those who put them in the predicament they're in. Even a coward resorts to sin to taste the sweetness of revenge. But where does it end? 
in a world full of blind folks when I go and I use the savagely plucking out eyes because we've been poked and those who didn't provoke are the ones who feel the wrath. They're drowning in tears and bloodbaths that were drawn by warlords and psychopaths. Psycho son and psycho dad versus terrorists and sick dictators. I'm a sick hater, but they played the mind games to perfection. Cause they had us fighting wars over weapons of mass deception. We were killing the dying with a mask and clashed with everybody but the bad who's crashed into our monuments. Death is being issued like condiments and drive through windows. Welcome to Armageddon, may I take your order? <laughs> and it takes a lot to cover the lies and the sin grows and grows as the tears flow and flow with the rate of suicide soar. Some soldiers can't take another tour in this debacle of a war. They'd rather die than be killed by a bomb in a road or a mom strapped with a booby trap to make a baby explode. Maybe I'm old fashioned, but these badges ain't fighting fair. The Geneva Convention didn't mention my son and the churches protecting folks who don't want us there. And the world warfare in itself is an oxymoron. Cause we morons to think of more ways to kill with more bombs And the devil's having a field day while God's creation is running amok We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but living the prophecies Don't wake up! By these whack ass MCs and their pop culture messages. Now, I can get on the mic and play some sick ass skills, but battling MCs ain't paying nobody's bills. You wanna catch a record deal? Sell that to Sony. Folks got the white bread, they be buying that baloney. And it don't take much to make a rich ass phony. Spin some butter cat shit, spit some silicone breast shit. Man, that's some whack shit. How did that become a hit? That's just depressing. All oh, you little waves, please quit! We need more positive female voices in the culture and hip hop. Letting feminine youth know how to rise to the top of the human condition. I might be ego tripping, but I ain't gonna be called too many more bitches. Especially by these whack ass rappers with their asses hanging out of their britches. Check it, check it. You wanna hear the truth? Listen strong. We've clearly oppressed the women by teaching the little girls all wrong. Now, the values of the feminine need to come forth. Time to silence that negating, ancient, patriarchal voice. Women crouched on the ground during menses and ritual, regenerating the earth with the flow of her own blood, and fools today can't even see this as spiritual. Mm. Y'all wanna rap about clean cash, money, fuck a hoe, silicone breast, and y'all know the rest. Go ahead, yakety yakety whack ass rap. I've been processed by the converter. I can't even hate the haters. I got food for thought that I haven't chewed longer than now and later. <laughs> score for Fatoni was 29.3. Yeah. Judges, are we ready? Scores up. We have a low to high. You can boo if you want. 
We have no love. We have an eight-point drop. A nine. A nine-point drive. A nine-point five. And a ten. Coming next to the night, give it up everybody, keep it going for Michael Clender. Okay, two poems. This is called Instruments of War. Imagine, instead of supplying them guns, they gifted them guitars. Taught instruments ready to be strummed, drums draped like fondant wedding cakes, flutes and piccolos and parachuted pianos instead of battle tanks, cellos instead of missiles. What a sentimental thought. Streets full of musicians instead of militias. The air rife with symphonies instead of silence streaked by screams. The response might be that peace can be achieved only through strength, that those in power must be stopped, toppled, or, on the contrary, reinforce new fleets of yesterday's tots groomed to aim but not see, destroy but not keen, or guard so that a pit can be carved and the enemy buried alive. Which leads us to this old random photo from the vast archives of war crimes. Imagine if instead the Japanese soldiers gripped saxophones and trumpets instead of shovels and bayonets and the young Chinese men cowering in the open crypt, about to be erased, navel cavities, throats, eyelids, fingernails, packed with darkness strangling them into a weightless tangle of wasted limbs, were instead rising from the dead, led by the ecstasy of whatever tune was blooming from the shining instruments of their so-called enemies and from the streets further off, where they all would join the parade, the festival of life, or what their lives could have been. This is called standardized, uh, standardized test. So uh, switch topics. We were nothing but little chimpanzees with pencils in our hands, pencils dutifully sharpened of just the right graphite grade, and in our desks in rows under rows of lights we hunched and swiveled, scribbling endlessly into the little perfect ovals of the national standardized test answer sheets, spiraling shiny dark insect eyes into zigzags of wrong and right. We learned to honor the clock by the door, its clear black and white divisions, its downward crawls and upward stops. We learned to do as we were told by elaborate instructions written as if by no one and read again and again by our penniless instructor until we said we understood and we did. It all made perfect sense. It was all part of the great demand on us to do well, to master our desire, our desire to run full tilt to escape with time to spare, with our wild spirits yet unfixed. Hands on for Michael Fender, everybody. Okay, the score for Dina was 28.0. Okay, judges, are we ready? Scores up. From low to high, we have a 7.0, a 7.5, a 7.5, and a 7.5, and an 8.0. Give it up for the poet. Everybody welcome the next poet to the mic. I'm going to get her name wrong. Lydia Jensen. Z -Z -Z -Z. <laughs> Lydia, give it up for Lydia. myself as a somebody, as someone who makes a value co valuable contribution to the world. I sit here with a degree in my hand, still doing meaningless work, getting paid the bare minimum, scraping by every single day. Feeling empty like my contribution to the world means nothing. The effort I made to better myself, to achieve something, to be something, to be a somebody, means nothing, because look where it got me. I'm still stuck in the same rut I was 10 years ago. Nothing has changed, except that I got a fucking degree in my hand written in fancy ass script as if to insinuate utmost importance, Bachelors of Arts in Psychology. 
And boy, do you know all the hell I went through to get to that shit. No one taught me about life and the struggles I might face. No one knew and my no one I knew in my family went to college. My mom didn't graduate high school. So here I am breaking it alone like no one who'd gone before me. I worked and I worked and worked, mopping floors, serving food, operating that piece of shit system, the POS, and here I am still. I haven't progressed much further. They told me a degree is your ticket to success. You'll get a higher paying job, and here I am still. I found what I wanted to do, but I gotta get more schooling. Application after application to graduate programs and jobs, that fancy ass supposedly important script doesn't mean jack. So tell me, so tell me please, how am I supposed to be somebody if every single person keeps rejecting me, downplaying me, and the achievements I have made and giving me no chance at all? Okay, the score for Michael Klinder, a 22.5, give it up for the poet. All right, judges, are we ready? Scores up. We have from low to high, an 8.0, an 8.3, an 8.5, a 9, and a 9.5. Give it up for the poet. Everybody, right, please welcome next to the mic, Amber Lee. Amber Earl, my, my call. Amber Earl. <laughs> Family, how y'all feel? This poem's called Hashtag Social Power. I want to write you a date. Oh, I'm sorry, you're out there, let me do this this way. I want to write you a daydream that stops your scrolling for two whole seconds. I'm sorry, two whole seconds. Forgive me, and maybe later we can Netflix and whatever it is we'll do after they watch a movie on the computer. I want to write you a personal reality that speaks to the hashtag truth without making you feel bombarded by who made that political party cry, or made that political party lie, or made people in that political party die, or maybe it's the other way around. You choose. Because it's true, isn't it? This escape we've made when we pick at that political parade or throw shade at those people, pick the group we have, to have a voice beyond the half-hearted laugh. But I want to give you the ability to wish again. Again, just 30 seconds of your time, my friend, since you've been watching those fail videos all day long, memorizing every moment, laughing at how wrong schadenfreude really is, yet it still seems right, just trying to feel something beyond fear and fright. I hope you like to be able to vacillate between verse and rhyme. Thanks for listening. Now I'll give you back your social time. <laughs> okay. Lydia scores? 25.8. 25.8. Give it up for the poll. All right, judges, are we ready? Scores up. From low to high, we have <laughs> we have a 6.8, a 7.5, an 8.0, an 8.0, an 8.5. Give it up for the poet. And let's keep it going, everybody, for the next poet, Steffi Sunny. away from you last night. You. You look like the man I was standing in the rain because I did not want to see your tears when I told you I did not love you, you. You look like the unborn child in her womb who could have been the next Nobel Peace Prize winner if only your mother had met peace instead of a boy, now you're ready to be a man, you. You look 
like the half-written manuscript I hid at the bottom of the drawer so I would not have to greet the story of lovers who never got an ending. You, you sound like the leftover tune. He hums to himself on nights he finds no solace in another man's song. You, you look like the stranger on the subway. The one I dare not talk to because you aren't very handy and you don't really like wearing caps. Yet people insist that you sit in the handicap seat. You, you look like his lieutenant, the man he in a moment of self-preservation and fear forgot to say while you were out fighting wars to save the world. You, you look like the hazel-eyed dog I walk in the shelter every week, patiently waiting for the day I will take you home. You, you look like hues of velvet reds and sky blues and mustard yellows blended together for the strokes of a brush so the sun can finally rise on the blank canvas. You look like the earth. The place I constantly call home yet don't care much for because you don't charge for the ground or the air and I'm the type that likes to conserve money without realizing cash prints on paper. You, you look like my best friend. The one with sad eyes and goofy smiles whose cryptic message I did not catch the night you told me you were going to sleep for a long time. I walked away from you last month, and it took me a month to realize that there's a seemingly insignificant yet technical difference between dying and feeling like you are dying, and the difference lies in the fact that the sun still rises the morning after, that the alarm clock still rings, and the traffic lights still turn green, yellow, or red, that finding parking is still a concern, that people expect you to answer back to, good morning, how are you doing today, that projects still have deadlines, a lunch breaks happen whether appetite or not, that the flowers still bloom and the key still fits in the lock, how can the key still fit in the lock that the fan still spins around, waiting for you to walk, stop watching it and fall asleep, and that instead of being dead once and for all, I must now learn to die a little each moment, because you, you look like regret. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, the scores for Amber Earl, 23.5, give it up for the poll. All right, judges, are we ready? Scores up. Stick to your guns, judges. Don't let them influence you. Okay, <laughs> our scores from low to high, an 8.0, an 8.5, a 9, a 9.5, and a 9.8. Give it up for the board. And please welcome our last board for the second round, first round, Kelsey Decker. Somebody said you got with your ex. Does she still treat you like your second best? Do you think of me when you're in a bed? Are you happy or lonely? Yeah, you know the rest. And yeah, I know it's stupid, but I just have to see it for myself. I'm in my car, babe. You're at her house, babe. Oh, who am I right now, driving my fur house? Oh, I knew I wanted to see it, but I just can't take it in right now. Oh, I'll keep loving you on my own, yeah. I just want to drink all night. I'm all messed up, I'm so out of line. My heart is yours. And I'm a fool. I'll stand in bed for you, hey. I'm in my car, babe. You're at her house, babe. Oh, who am I right now? Driving by her house. Oh, I knew I wanted to see it, 
But I just can't take it in right now. Oh, I'll keep loving you on my own. Yeah. All right, so I can't let my love for you drown me. Not because I don't love you, but because I love me. Oh, I'm so sorry. All right. We promised we would love each other unconditionally. But in what condition? To you, my love, it's in every condition. Today's love is so weak. All pictures, no work. All pictures, no work. I love you when you're successful. I love you when you're unfaithful. I love you when you're sweet. And I love you when you're impatient. I love you when you're tired. And I love you when you're closed. I love you next to me being yourself. So you, so to you, my love, Get your heart and mind healthy so I can give you all of me. Until then, my love, I have to love me unconditionally. Okay, the score for Steffi Sunny, 27.0. All right, judges, are we ready? Scores up. From low to high, we have a 7.5, a 7.8, an 8, an 8.5, and a 9.5. Give it up for the poll. Right. Mr. Blue, first round, we'll check the scores and see which eight points go on to the second round. Uh, take a little break, have a little drink, do a little... Good time for a drink. Oh, yeah, good time for a drink. <laughs> we'll be right back. Thank you. Sometimes I, I close my eyes and try to imagine a world where I don't see dead people. Lips chapped, tongues lolling, voices choked by empty phrases, walking this earth not knowing that life is passing by. I see your faces. Eyes reflecting back his existence, bodies exuding the putrid, moldy smells of pent up dreams, unfulfilled and rotting inside timid hearts. I've walked this wasteland far too long, haunted by the silent wails and moans of those who don't even know, have just an inkling that something vital is missing. Check yourself. If you believe that just because you look into your mirror and see movement reflecting your emotions, that it means you're alive, you're deluded. Because by that reasoning, your so-called reflection and claim the same. See, it's that kind of one-dimensional emptiness that haunts my sight. That's why for me, April is the cruelest month. Because while the earth is renewing, flowers blooming, bees buzzing, butterflies warping, most people I know are just merging into the same old existence of last year, and the year before, and the year before. Dreams die first, then the body slowly follows. Are you still here? Can you remember that younger, eager, more vibrant you? Remember how you were always ready to try something new? Didn't worry about embarrassment? Didn't worry about what everybody else would say or think about it? You just did it for the wonder of it. Yeah, yeah. Where did that person go? What happened to those I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do as you had so many years ago? How did living become so mundane? It's our insane devotion to conformity. Everybody wants to be normal, but now our normality is melted with our formality and, and our duality has died and you don't even daydream anymore. Tell me, do you still watch your body take flight in the late night stories your subconscious tells your soul? Or has even that part of you been vacated and all you do is sleep, eat, shit? <laughs> to be or not to be? Is that still a question for you? I know we all have these responsibilities now, but sometimes you gotta come out of that jacket. Take that little one's hand and let her know that it's okay to go singing in the rain. Otherwise, we die slowly, unknowing. It's time, y'all. Time to reach back and find that kid in you again so you can look into that mirror and tell that one-dimensional reflection that can't touch this. That's all I want. All I want you to do is wake up and live again. Because every day when I get up, get out, and look around, I see dead people. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Okay, I see you ain't even scored, so we'll just bypass that. Are we ready for the second round? That's good. That's good. We ready for the second round? Yeah! Hey, I want everybody to remember, if, if a poet's up here and they say something that just strikes you to your soul, just jump up. Damn! <laughs> Let them know that you're feeling it. Get into it. Because poets love that. Ask every poet in here. They love that kind of feedback. Give it to them. Do it again. Do it again? Watch out, Bob. Okay. Let's get it going. Keep it going for the first poet in the second round, Lydia Gentius. myself as a somebody, as someone who makes a valuable contribution to the world. I sit here with a degree in my hand, still doing meaningless work, getting paid the bare minimum, scraping by every single day, feeling empty like my contribution to the world means nothing, the effort I made to better myself, to achieve something, to be somebody, to be a somebody means nothing, because look where it got me. I'm still stuck in the same rut I was 10 years ago. Nothing has changed. Except that I got a fucking degree in my hand written in fancy ass script as if to insinuate utmost importance. Bachelors of Arts in Psychology. And boy, do you know all the hell I went through to get that shit. No one taught me about life and the struggles I might face. No one I knew when my family went to college. My mom didn't graduate high school. So here I am braving it alone like no one who's gone before me. I worked and worked and worked, mopping floors, serving food, operating that piece of shit system, the POS, and here I am still. I haven't progressed much further. They told me a degree is your ticket to success. You'll get a higher paying job. And here I am still. I found what I wanted to do, but I gotta get more schooling. Application after application to graduate programs and jobs. That fancy ass supposedly important script doesn't mean jack. So tell me, please, how am I supposed to be somebody if every single person keeps rejecting me, downplaying me, and the achievements I have made, and giving me no chance at all? Good up for boy. Somebody didn't expect that to pass first round. Oh. <laughs> Okay, judges, are you ready? Scores up. Scores up. From low to high, we have a 6.0, a 6.1, a 7. An 8.5 and an 8.7. Give it up for the board. And keep it going for the next board to the mic. Give it up for Christopher Michael. Mr. Bullet goes to work, or Mr. Bullet takes a life, or Mr. Bullet says, hey little nigga boy, hey thug, hey convict and future convict, hey dark truth veiled in hoodie, ugly fact of American history, forgotten contributor to the world, hey black girl with no name and no voice, Mr. Bullet says, hey six year old black man, breaking into your own car, in your own driveway, hey, hey black boy, Black girl suspiciously sleeping in your car. Hey, black boy, you in Walmart about to buy a toy gun. Hey, black folks, y'all done church? Y'all finished praying? Is Bible study over? Hey, black boy, I got another 40 friends that want to come to your wedding. Maybe we can do some shots. Mr. Bullet says, you think you fast, little nigga boy? You ain't fast. You ain't no Jesse Owens. You ain't no Florence Griffin Joyner. You ain't no Hussein Bolt. Died in your 20s. That's fast. Died before graduation. Ha! That's fast. Died before 12. Oh! That's fast. Boy! I'm five times faster than that BB gun laying beside your body. Damn, you taste good. I ain't 
expect your entrails to be so warm? Is, is, this why, is this why sharks follow slave ships through the middle passage? Is this why flames love to picnic feast on your flesh? I almost feel sorry for the noose that only gets to nibble on your neck. On the way in, I just saw another black silhouette. I thought this was practice. No nigga boy, only three-fifths as valuable as white paper targets, but twice as tasty. <laughs> why, why you got your hands in the air? You, you got questions? You want to know how fast I am. Well, on average, I travel at 2,500 feet per second. That is to say, you would have had to be on the 150 yard line for hope of a chance. But you ain't. This ain't the Matrix. You can't dodge me. I broke the sound barrier twice on the way to breaking your body, boy. I'll get to city to pay your family millions if you just let me inside. I was made to make a good entrance, but my exits are much bigger. These young boys don't know nothing about blowing nobody's back out. Once the trigger's pulled, I want back out. Cock, click, burn! Black. Yes. No, no, no. It's this round. 21.6. Give it up for the poll. Alright, judges, are we ready? Scores up. A supposition or a system of ideas intended to explain something, especially one based on general principles independent of the thing to be explained, a theory. I haven't met you yet, but I have a theory about us. I have a theory that my teachers in school could have used us to explain theories. Fifth grade grammar, Mrs. Stewart could have articulated how in parts of a sentence you must always look for the word first to know who or what is followed by it, similar to the way they must look for you to get to me. Sixth grade astronomy, us instead of the solar system to explain the difference between revolutions and rotations, the art of orbiting around you and within myself in perfect synchronizations. Seventh grade physics, an apple unnecessary to explain the theory of gravity, testing instead the way you pull me towards you through an unseeable force feeling grounded and bounded simultaneously, eighth grade physical science. Us instead of the Earth's axial tilt to capture the importance of how 23 and a half could become the reason for all the seasons in your life. Ninth grade history, how those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it by Santana, and people learn best by repetition, and some never learn the way I seem to find ways to fall for you again and again. 10th grade geometry, 3.14159265953, an irrational constant. Non-repetitive, unending, representing my fears and doubts before I knew what it would mean to sit in your presence. 11th grade chemistry, the interaction of energy between an electron and a proton, although too small to be seen by the naked eye, would be apparent in the chemistry between you and me. 12th grade biostat. There are examples I have found now to explain the theory of chaos, the butterfly effect, how every time the flutter of your gaze falls on my skin, a universe could explode. 13th grade love. I haven't met you yet, but I have a theory about us. I have a theory that no theory nor to mortal men, no words articulate, no imagination created to explain the phenomenon of us. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> the score for 
Christopher Michael. Give it up for the poor. Judges, are we ready? Scores up. From low to high, we have a 7.5, an 8, a 9.5, a 9.5, and a 9.8. Give it up for the poor. Next board on the right, Mike, Audi Lawton. This is called Statutory. Statutory rape to my friend Tori into a statue. I know, it's hard to listen as these words are coming at you. I'll tell you a little story, Hawaii. Yes, I will be glad to. A girl at 17 can't even get a tattoo, but he looks at her 15 years old. She looks at him, his soul is sold. This girl, she's got a heart of gold, but she don't know him, just know he's older than her, and that he's bolder than her. She sees him drive that whip so cold and sees him do those stupid things that I know don't lead to diamond rings. He yells, hop in, baby, catch a ride. At first, this girl just rolls her eyes, but then he pulls up to the then he pulls up to the side and jokes, "Damn, Jake, you hurt my pride." She laughs, takes a step to look inside. His eyes, they're grinning, and his smile, it's winning, winning a rover. A few miles away, I think she found a four-leaf clover. He, clover. He's cute. He drives. I think he does drugs, but he's smart. We vibe. Whatever. She shrugs. Well, now they're back at his place, and he gets a look upon his face. Pulls her in a close embrace, his fingers, they begin to trace her body into that special place. Intimidated, she's frozen in space, she needs to slow down this rapid pace, but it's like a movie, she's out of body. He begins to speak and it's way too naughty. Come on over here, girl, let me show you how it's done. Open up your mouth and let's begin all the fun. Wait, stop! My mouth's all agape, not to hold your dick, but because this is rape! She screams this in a powerful voice. Finally returned, she knows she has a choice. So she runs out the house, hides down the street in the bushes, quiet as a mouse from that domineering perpetrator, more worthless than a louse. Oh, wait, that, she's okay. She's okay. Oh, she was okay. Yeah, she was okay, just, just okay, okay? Uh, the kind of okay she'll never forget for the rest of her life. Now, for those who in fear could not overcome paralysis, don't succumb to self-doubters and bullshit psychoanalysis. And for those who were attacked brutally by force, this is not to alienate you, shame you, or worse. This is one story. One story out of millions. Now right there, isn't that the problem? I think that's the fucking problem. That's the fucking problem. We need to keep focused on the victims, but not ignore the perpetrators. If we change the laws and shame the villains, maybe one day their, num their victims will number in the millions. All right, and Steffi Sunny score 27.0. Give it up for the poll. Judges, are we ready? Scores up. From low to high, we have an 8.5, a 9, a 9, a 9, and a 9.5. Give it up for the poet, and keep it going for the next poet to the mic, the total. is knowing that it's going to happen in the morning. 
daddy will die. This is not the bitter decree of a quitter. This is me coming to grips with the fact that my grip on living is slipping. And I'm sick and tired of being sick, admired in debilitating pain and misery day after day after miserable day. Daddy, I don't want to be here no more. What's the point of holding on to hope when I can't even hold my head up or keep food down? What's the point of having faith when my faith was sealed with this cursed disease at birth? Ooh, it hurts. There's no cure for what ails me. And the pseudo remedies from the pharmaceuticals are not suitable aids for my frailty. It should be illegal to give patients mistreatment and pills with side effects that make them even more ill than the illness. They don't want a cure, they just want to prolong life long enough to siphon your life savings and suck your insurance money dry. I can hear you and mama fighting over money and crying at night. And the sound of mama bawling and seeping through my bedroom walls is almost as loud as the grim reaper's incessant call for my life. He's killing mama to watch me die and I just about die in shame. Every time she has to wipe my butt and faint like it does with this but it bothered me. The process of dying has to be infinitely worse than death itself. It is selfish to want me to continue to exist like this. You have to let me go. Daddy, I'm going to miss y'all too, but I've already made peace with my maker. And he's already sent his angels to take me home in the morning. Isn't Grandma beautiful? She says that all you have to do to make it through is give it to God and sing the happy in the morning time song that she used to sing. Sleep away the sadness, wake up in the gladness, happy in the morning time. Sleep away. The scores for Allie Lofton, 27.0. I give it up for the poet. All right, judges, are we ready? Scores up. We have, from low to high, we have a 9.2, a 9.7, a 9.9, .9, a 10, and a 10. Give it up for the poet. Let's keep it going for the next poet to the mic, Kelsey Decker. but my heart is steady. I'm anxious, but my heart is so steady. The pressure, the joy, the expectations. I love everything about life, so that I don't question. So let's start with the foundation. Who am I? <laughs> Who am I? The black girl that's too white. After all this education, that still don't set right. After all this education, that still don't fucking set right, right? I have to be vulgar for you to hear me. Judge me, I'm humble. Judge me, I'm patient. Judge me, I'm ready, and I'm way too gracious. Am I the only one who wants more? Not more things, I need more time. I need more time. 
I need more time to spend with my family instead of working like crazy. I need time to spend with my friends, my right hands, my real friends, to talk about our past and our future. Notice I skipped the most important part, so naturally, the present. I can't forget. I can't forget, I have to live. I have to live right now, every second of every day. Most of them I spend laughing, the other moments I spend worrying, and those are the moments I need to work out. Leave my heart in the breeze, you know? Kindness, true kindness, is what I try to maintain. It's hard for some, and that I don't understand. Under any circumstances, you can always be kind, be loving, be giving. Don't let this world taint you. World waves, all the shit in my face. Be smart, be sexy, be adventurous. How, out of all of these commercials and all these ridiculous materialistic pressures, did they forget to say, be kind? That's what we're dying for, right? Kindness? I know we are, so let me be the first to say, I fight jealousy because my heart is too steady to fall into something so shallow. I fight expectations because I'm too creative to be put in a box. I'm, I'm scared to have a girl because of the unrealistic pressures of being today's woman. So I know each day I'll tell her how amazing she is. And I'm scared to have a boy because of the unrealistic and unloving ways of being today's man. So I know every day I'll tell him how amazing he is. But most importantly, I'm scared of being in love. I'm too fragile. My heart was made too pure. I'm emotional, yes, because I can't hold it anymore. If this is, if the world's gonna change, we can't hide it anymore. I'm way too prepared to wait for someone to save me. And I'm way too liberal to be politically correct. So if you're hearing this, take a deep breath. I love you, I love you for who you are. I don't care if you're gay, you're straight, you're black, you're this, you're that. I love you, and that's what's the most important thing. I wanna know who you are, I wanna know what you think, I wanna know everything about you, and that's who I am. So take a deep breath, try to control me and I'll grip your throat. If I can't breathe, neither can you. In other words, no air to the throne. So, no matter where life takes us, my heart's in capsules. I was made for you, I was made to live together apart. I love you and I'll stand for you. I'll stand here every day, every poem, every slam. I'll do this, nervous or not. This is what I need to do. My mom always said, Kelsey, be patient, be patient, be patient, be patient. Keep waiting, keep waiting, keep waiting. But I'm done waiting. I'm ready to be kind and I'm ready to be giving. And I don't care who hears this. I'm ready to live. All right, uh, the Tony score was 29.6. And judges, are we ready? Scores up. We have from low to high, we have a 7.2, a 7.5, a 9, a 9, and a 9. Give it up for the poet. Keep it going for the next poet for the night, Dina B. Dina. together, happy like kids on a playground, emotions up, never down. Maybe it's the way you never let me frown. Or that breathtaking caress that rearranges my hair to expose my skin, and then you put your lips there. 
Mm, I want to show you what my feminine is. I want to show you what my feminine is. You can taste these feminine lips. It's bones grinding in sockets of hips with every pelvic thrusting pump. Clit brushes into lip and my shit starts to drip. Somebody tell Miss Minaj her paddle ain't gonna do shit. Call the Coast Guards in motion, cause this pussy is wet like an ocean. I'm gonna need you inside of me deeper than Nas and hip hop. Rodney King, this pussy baby. Don't you ever stop. Hold up. Cause you know how I like my orgasms. Slow fuck with me on top. This is not a love poem, see? This is not love poetry. This has very little to do with love and everything to do with the way that you put it on me. I do love her, see? But that's in my other 10,000 pages of poetry. Somehow I'm still all right. And now I'm growing and getting thicker. And my surroundings are thinning, and then came along a strong current, and now I'm spinning, and that very same thing that was giving me life is now wrapped around my neck, and I can't breathe. I don't know if I'll survive, so I curl my elbows to my knees. <coughs> and I hear an angelic voice. Scream, Father, please, let him make it. All of a sudden, I was no longer suffocating. My source of life had been clipped from around my neck and I found myself bloody and naked. And I felt a draft because I was no longer underwater. And then someone smacked me on my ass. And I heard that angelic voice say, don't cry, baby. Just great. Thank you. Give it up for the boys. Give it up for the All right, the score for Dina B 28.6. Give it up for the boys. Judges, are we ready? Let's get them up. I have from Mona High an 8.5, oh. 
an 8.7, an 8.7, an 8.8, .8, and an 8.9. Give it up for the four. And this concludes the second round. We will see you with some, some four points. We'll move on to the final round. Uh, this is kind of last call for alcohol. If anybody wants to get up and get them a drink, this, we'll take about a five minute intermission and come back again. The poets, I will call the, them the four poets up to the mic so we can draw numbers. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed yourself so far. And since this is the final round and everybody tends to be a lot more serious and all that, I'm gonna do something a little lighthearted to get us started here. About time. <laughs> There's a, you know, I did a little exercise, try to get a, write a poem where you take one word or two words, and repeat them over and over, and try to make a poem out of it. And this is the result of that. <laughs> Don't be shaking your head. <laughs> See, every one of us has a friend or associate who just cannot seem to complete the sentence without the words motherfucker or motherfucker. <laughs> who think that motherfucker is a perfect noun, verb, adjective, and adverb to insert in any motherfucking place they motherfucking want to? We'll say things like, this motherfucking shit here is a bomb. <laughs> You can see them waking up in the morning, going in the kitchen and exploding. But I'll be a motherfucker. This sorry motherfucking, inconsiderate motherfucker drank all the motherfucking milk and didn't even tell the motherfucker. Just put the empty motherfucking jug back in the motherfucking fridge, knowing good goddamn well everybody in here is going to be waking up in the morning and want some motherfucking cereal. That's why I can't stand the motherfucker. That's why I would never let a sorry motherfucking bitch ass house in my house but the sorry motherfucker plays on my wife's sorry ass heart. Honey, he's my only brother and I, he's got nowhere else to go. Now my motherfucking kids gotta do without that motherfucking series because of this sorry, inconsiderate motherfucker. I'll just fuck him up. Then he gets around your moms and you tense up because you know his mouth is going to just go off and he smiles and says, and how are you doing, Mrs. B? Yes, it is a nice day. And blessings to you too, man. You take care of me, okay? Then he looks at that look on your face as the two of you are driving off and, what, motherfucker? You think I'm some inconsiderate, uncouth motherfucker? who don't know how to wrap around somebody's motherfucking mama. Motherfucker, I got a motherfucking mama. I don't want some crazy motherfucker saying that shit around my motherfucking mama. So I know how to be cool around your motherfucking mama. So fuck you and keep your eyes on the road, old cross-eyed motherfucker. Thank you. All right, now that we got silly enough, <laughs> and this is why Toby B leads the poetry club. He is one motherfucking great guy. Okay, no more profanity tonight, everybody. <laughs> okay, let's get back into it. Everybody put your hands together for Steffi Sunday. Give it up. <laughs> some people invest time, some money, but you invested your mind, your body, your life, not ordinary. These are my father's hands, my father's feet. They have held when no one cared, they have carried when no one washed. Your hair, black as a night, grasped and pulled in countless tantrums, have faded a shade of gray that speaks of having seen better days. Your ears, sharp enough to pick up my muffled sobs from the corner room, now seem oblivious to repeated calling of your name. Shoulders used to carrying the burdens of a little girl have lately been slouched in ways I haven't seen before. Fingers that engulf tiny hands and lost on purpose and thumb force cannot grasp change for the winding machine. The substitute for little pony rides your back is hunched as if all the weight over the ears had suddenly caught up your feet that walked many miles in pursuit of my vanity. Too weak these days to support 
your own fragile falling body, I looked at you after what seemed like many years today. And I wondered if I was the reason you looked so tired, if I had sucked the life out of your bones. Though I did not realize it, I debate as if I, as if I grew stronger, you grew weak. The sweat of your brow is witness. I cannot call myself self-made because you have made me. But it is time now for you to rest. Don't worry. I will invest my mind, my body, my life, not ordinary. These are your daughter's hands, your daughter's feet. They will hold when no one cares. They will carry when no one watches. Thank you. Okay, judges, are we ready? <laughs> Scores up. From low to high, we have a 7.2, an 8, an 8.5, an 8.9, and a 9. Give it up for the boys. And keep it going, everybody, from the next point to the mic. For Tony, give it up. Surrender now by the hair of a chitty chin chin. I can tennis blend with bosses and bosses deserve stitches. Got 50 for any boy who think he can creep with me. Shifty with a spit in me. I'm sort of lifty with spits. Rappers and gifts with me. I'm blessed. I devour cowboys with lyrical powers. I was and I was a bard. I freak a track like a lyric Bernard. It's a job. This ain't no hobby for bird. I be dropping these birds. Then God stop me or anybody the bird. You ain't heard of me. Deliver this lyrical news flash. Competition run up. I'm a tear on my new eye. We can back on my rhythm, so we can make guns blast, so we can jab at you, don't make me grab my ruler. What? See, you ain't ready. <laughs> Ooh, you gon' get it. I'm about to literally smack the lack of talent out of you whack rappers. I mean crappers. I mean your rap is so crappy that you should wipe the trap like a butt crack after. Double touch and disinfect the disrespect out of your diary, your dialect. I'm about to keep the self-destruction out of you. Me, me, mouth, bust the school, stop calling our brothers and sisters, niggas and bitches, and criticizing the sister with that negative depiction of us. Yo, man, put your bridges up. You look ridiculous. I'm about to put my foot so far up in your hoof fast that you won't be pooping punchlines for a week. Did you really think that you can defeat me? You got me effed up like a porno in zero gravity. Translation? You got me effed up like me and your main squeeze. I love her taking while she's licking my tank and I'm poking your side piece and back with a toothpick. You got a that spits flames like a dragon. I'll have you switching on stage like your agenda is to switch genders like Bruce Jenner getting his drag on. Oh, fake Caitlyn ass. Too soft to be pop, too ugly to be draped ass. All of them kids think that you a kid with him with your pin pin to his penis swinging like a pendulum. Your pin is done. May you rest in peace of disease DCs along with the Cordy's battle pieces. I'm Tyrone, and I'm here to ask somebody's mama. Don't get stopped. I'm in the living room sofa wooing your mother with some poetry and slow jam for my hand jam inside the Victoria's Secret jammies while I sweet the and seat down my middle finger. I want her to come, but I don't want her to linger. So before I call the Uber, I lube her. Give a fool by the massage to soothe her because I'm smooth like that. My hands are warm in a big booty like a planet, and I'm digging a diggable planet because I'm cool like that. And I spat on her forehead so I can stay on her mind all day, but not today. Long story short, rap was created when poetry skeeted dope lyrics on the beat to produce the musical revolution. Translation, you came from my ball, son. Respect your dad. Poetry. <laughs> And the score for Lydia J. 
Gentiles was 25.4. Okay. Judges, are we ready? Yeah. Let's get them up. Columbus and Plymouth Rock to moon the knee and drove them to their grave. Stole another people, stripped the culture, then turned them into slaves. And I don't recall them in the internal combustion that has the ozone problem. Nor do I block legislation that could just fix the problem. And I ain't never shed no blood for no oil, nor do I test nukes that cause the ground to spoil. So how come I walk down the street and you look at me dirty? But the profile for serial killer is white male in his 30s. And you won't find photographs and frames of my family tree, no cold blooded killers like Manson, Mussolini, Hitler, Kaborkin, Gatlin, Guillotine, and Dahmer. And I sure as hell didn't even know atomic, hydrogen, or nuclear bomber. Not at the night on the local news, my reputation's bruised. But who slaughtered all those Jews? Then vaporized those Asian lives because you was about to lose. But you clutch your purse, you see me perched on the corner, Steve. Does this make sense to you? I think I understand why the sight of me stirs so much fear. It's that generational guilt given to you by your grandfathers. You feel it right here. And it's just sad that your psychology won't allow for a formal apology. Your ignorance is false that you're fearing me. False that your focus making you the fool. Someday I'm worried about me, you never see the signs or seeds about to shoot up some school. You don't see my sisters clutching no purses. You also don't see me burning down no churches. So how come I'm always the victim of the Billy Clubs you be wielding? And I have blew up no victim in buildings. Y'all remember that day? Flags half staff in the Timothy McVay. You was on the train to the ass, by the way. But, but you clutch your purse, you see me perched on the corner stool? What about Drew? Charles Drew? Yeah. Discovered plasma which perfected the blood transfusion? But how many times have I bled to death on your hospital steps because you were screwed refusing? It seems your southern hospitality failed when this brother discovered your life and collected and stored your blood on a larger scale. What about Daniel Hale? Daniel Hale Williams? See, this brother's patients didn't need no clergy. First successful open heart surgery. But when it was time to be tested and treated at Tuskegee, I was neglected. And my airman, my airman didn't lose that one damn plane they protected. And what did I get? My baby brother's beautiful brown body battled with bullets because he brandished a BB gun. And I still can't get no cow. They owe it to him not then. Then the U.S. used his power to tackle those who toppled towers. But what about that many flour? Am I still three-fifths of man? Who's going to get me for the terror? I stuck in the hands of the Ku Klux Klan. But who fucked up his I am not so angry as like that. No, you are. <laughs> But you clutch your purse when you see me perched on the corner stool?
presence. See, it's universal truth that gives words leverage. It ain't Michael Jordan shoes or platinum chains on your neck. It's simple meditation that'll keep your head in check. Now, ladies, keep this shit in mind when they tell you drop it low and dirty wine. When sucker MCs get soup cooler slapping and you only understand every third verb, and even that's a curse word, when bitch this and fuck that is all you heard. Huh. Well, they got masses dancing and clapping, but these fools don't know what the hell's happening. They spending hard-earned American cash on rappers with little talent and zero class. Like these little Waynes and Slim Shadies reducing bitches to women and ass. Now, the irony is, the very thing you claim to hate, that your sarcastic antics imitate, is the very thing you perpetuate. You're stealing their fate, because the youth, they won't hesitate to follow you as you take your true self, place it on a shelf, trade in this mask for a philosophy by which proclaiming a belief in it makes you feel more comfortable in the skin you're trying to live in. Like your TV and your sofa. It's a butterfly effect or a social buffer and or disconnect. One, two, one, two, this is reality, check. Hey, moms, have your kids tried Adderall yet? One, two, one, two, this is reality, check. Hey, hey kids, have your moms tried Prozac yet? To cope with this disappointing place where people hate you based on your race and our coming of age ceremonies for our baby girls are twerk for you two while we convert you to Nicki Minaj fans so you can covet plastic asses and fake tans. Next, will reduce you to Barbie dolls living in a pop culture wasteland where everyone looks like a zombie controlled by the apocalypse of the cell phone in your hand. That's right. <laughs> you missed half the shit your kid did today at the park. I watched her as I danced. She said, Mommy, Mommy, I climbed to the highest park. But your face was an Instagram. Mm. Just clicking little Give it up for the poor, give it up for the poor. Okay, we gotta say it. Christopher Michael's score was a 30. Okay. Now, judges, are we ready? Let's get them up. We have from low to high, we have a 9.5, a 9.6, a 9.9, .9, a 10, and a 10. Give it up for the poor. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a tie. And so, we have to go to a sudden death round between Fatodi and Christopher Michael. Can both of you guys come up to the mic? Judges, we are going to write the name of the one you like most. You're going to list the both poems, and then you're going to write the name of the poet you prefer. Okay, everybody, all the judges have that. All right, this is Christopher Espinosa. All right, who's first? All right, so let's welcome first to the mic, Christopher Mike. women who uphold the integrity of black culture. Iggy Azalea. <laughs> Justin Bieber. <laughs> Stacey Dash. Oh. Raven Simone. <laughs> Don Lemon. And Miss Cyrus. 
the undisputed queen of twerk. <laughs> Dear former child star who is desperately trying to get attention, did I become a has-been before the age of 21 by over-sexualizing yourself even though I can't find anything remotely sexy about you? I, I will not change your decision to use sexuality to earn a living, make a name for yourself, or stay relevant. If you don't do it, surely a man will attempt to do it for you. What I would like to talk to you about is your decision, I'm assuming it's your decision since you are an adult now, is to use the asses of black women as props. A whole video news board stage filled with admin objects, butts bouncing, but faces not worthy for broadcast. When you smack that woman on the ass, it feels more like a smack in the face. You preach your best in tricycle, hugging the curves of women you will never be licensed to navigate. Hannah. Can I call you Hannah? Hannah. Do you know what a menstrual show is? You black face your music, got the attention you want, using the asses of women. If I wasn't so appalled, I'd applaud you to achieve your goal. So help me understand something. When referencing your music, what did you mean when you said, I just want something that feels black? When you say it feels black, do you mean the feel of building the pyramids? The feel of riding the three musketeers, being the fastest person on the earth, the greatest tennis player in the game, or the leader of the free world? Is that the feel you're looking for? Or maybe. Maybe you've been the feel of having the nose and your monuments blowing off to hide your face in history. Maybe the black feel is when you're a messianic savior and no one will accept your truth unless it's been whitewashed hammer. Black feels like the pioneers of the new world ripping babies from bosom and sold on the auction block. Black feels like watching your wife being torn in half while a child spills out just to show you who's boss. Black feels like watching your shackled husband cry because all he can do is watch his good white folks and Christians defile his family's flesh. Black feels like Birmingham burning. Flames twerking the stage for little girls. Black feel like tasers, billy clubs, fire hoses, and dogs. Black feel like being tied to the back of a truck in Jasper, Texas. Black feel like dying to stand your ground. Black feel like being an unarmed target. Black feel like I can't breathe. Black feel like a dead boy with a BB gun. Black feel like being 13% of the American population and 50% of the prison population. Black feels like having the culture that you birthed from pain and defiance co-opted. Pimped and gentrified by the children of the same people you struggled against. The ones who shackled and used your opportunities for so long. Clearly, black doesn't feel like respecting the culture or the people you are profiting from. I blame your mama. <laughs> and Billy Ray Cyrus. They should have taught your narrow ass better. <laughs> Give it up for the board. Now, Joe, I want you to remember that form right there and give it up, everybody, for the next board for Tony. Let's go. their knuckles beating on women who've become accustomed to getting beaten by busters. She's so used to abuse that she mass produces excuses for the bruises that you passes and dudes, and she just happens to lose her balance. Every time you lose, just lose your temper after too many gin and juices, and when your favorite team loses, she has a scarf. For every occasion, to hide the scores and abrasions. When you choked her for being too outspoken, you even beat her when a pesky weeping woke you when she was riding in agony because her right arm was broken. Why you? Just a token from the previous assault and battery when you battered up chatting with the drive through cat at churches and you falsely accused her of serving the commissioner to hurt her because she politely said thank you after the purchase, but no. Your harsh words are what makes her feel worse than she. Practically answers the bitch like it's a nickname Cause you fake Rick James play sick games with her mind frame And she claims the pain that you inflict a merely love lich And she swears she sees a change She has a slight concussion so I guess that's why she's seeing things Please have a seat, Mr. Wife Beater, whose wife beat us bloody from the beating you unleash when you claim she dressed too slutty. See, he checks her dresses for protruding cleavage and butt cheeks. He's fearing she'll attract the attention of a real man who will pique her interest and listen long enough for her to leak the secrets to why she weeps. Evil is done in darkness, so in the shadows is where he creeps. 
Last night he stripped her naked and drove her through the neighborhood. But the neighbors stood and watched, but no one intervened. No one answered her cries and screamed, but he punished her eyes and screamed. And although many witnessed the scene, they were too chicken to stop it. Oh, but there's surely gossip about the topic. You see they comatose in the hospital, please. Let me discuss with the tough customer just how messed up it is that she begged his kids and he dared to not care about the damage he did. Can I have a word with the sadistic son of a bitch who chin checks chicks with it? Sweeter than a snicker when the fella's in the picture. You're a coward, a cream puff, softer than a lily flower, weaker than a virgin factory. I wish the bands had a knack to attack me because I would slay the massage in his beast to unleash his fury on women with the flurry of debilitating blows. Then he boasts to his friends about how he checks Oh, but he failed to recognize that he wrecked her soul. He's a control freak. So she screams every syllable like the Middle Easterners in turbans at JFK the day after 9 11 took place. Because her opinion is not allowed to leave her lips. Because loose lips won't just sink ships that get a beat up from her feet up. So it's best she keeps them zipped. So I speak for my mother, sister, cousin. Because what they thought was love wasn't. And what a man should do, he doesn't. He did it. He wouldn't. It wasn't supposed to be like this. You were supposed When you get frustrated, it's just not wise to give black eyes to your best ally when you're trying to make it in life. But you made it impossible for her flower to blossom the way she could have, should have, or have missed her. What if it was your daughter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get it up. 